the United States versus Billie Holiday. What in the hell did I just watch? Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Billie Holiday. Reporters keep asking me, Billy, why you do the things you do? This is what I tell them. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Kev, um, what did you feel about about the United States versus Billie Holiday? So um, I was not aware of how important the song "Strange Fruit" was to the career of Billie Holiday. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, so I felt. I thought I learned a few things. Um, I did want to know more about some people um, in the, from the movie that I had never heard of, uh, namely uh, the uh, agent who I was supposed to um, work against her and then ended up like living with her. Um, Jimmy Fletcher, yeah. <laughs> I wanted to know a little more about him because my first suspicion was, who is this person? Did they actually exist? Was this a composite? Um, and I'm, I'm told that there's not a lot about him. Right. Um, but all told, um, it was, it was kind of sad, but I mean, if you know about the life of Bill Holiday, I mean, yeah, uh, she had a lot of sadness in her life um, as important as her career was um, to civil rights. Um, There's a lot of sadness there. So that wasn't actually surprising, but it was, um, it was, um, it was a very moving uh, film. I'll say it that way. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of parts that really make you feel it in your gut. Uh, she had the issues with drugs. She had um, the issues with her relationships with a lot of them being toxic. Um, and this is known in actual, you know, um, with different things that have been done about her life. Her music is transcending and just was the narration of that time period around the 1940s. Andre Day gave an amazing, captivating uh, rendition of Billie Holiday. Uh, and it's always good when you can get someone to portray a person who just so happens to either play music or to sing, and that person can actually sing or play music. And in this case, if I'm not mistaken, all of the times that you heard her sing or you heard her uh, different songs, it was Andra singing. And I wonder if that was one of the things that um, Lee Daniels felt, you know, this is who I want to create this film around. Um, not to go into the, the, the cons uh, immediately, but one of the issues um, seemed to be that it was just that. It was her as the nucleus of uh, this biopic and the characters around her although they provided a bit of levity here and there, they didn't seem to carry the, the emotion that she did. And it seemed like um, she sucked everything around her out of the rooms that she was in, out of the sets that she was in, just by being so brilliant, just by portraying that depression and that pain and that grief and that anxiety that I wondered if the characters were written as well as hers was. What did you think? I do agree that uh, she was, uh, Andre Day seemed to be the one who was doing the acting um, in the movie, um, as opposed to like anyone else. Um, I think uh, the last movie that we talked about, um, the <laughs> I See Again, <laughs> where the FBI agent <laughs> right. doesn't, doesn't seem to be doing much. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I noticed I that here too. Uh, Agent Fletcher didn't seem to be doing much other than right. being on her arm. Okay. So so be it. But I agree. Um, um, Billy Holiday in this in this movie did seem to be more uh, more fleshed out of a character than anyone else. Um, right. um, it's about Billy Holiday. That's fine. But everybody else seemed to just not be making much of an effect at all. Perhaps right. a, a deliberate choice. Um, but uh, that is something I noticed. Yeah, Travante Rhodes is the name of the uh, young man who played Jimmy Fletcher. 
Now, granted, um, I've, I've seen him in a couple of different things in which he can act. Mm -hmm. And I won't say that he was, you know, a weak note in the film. Um, just on a side note, I found out that uh, Lakeith Stanfield was actually supposed to portray Jimmy Fletcher in this. Ooh. Yeah. And I, I wonder if it had anything to do Ooh. about Judas and him not wanting to play you know in some ways an undercover agent two times you know right. um uh it seemed like the government the the people behind the curtain weren't as well written as some of the other movies like this um and in a lot of ways they were forgettable but I, what I did feel was interesting was um, another comparison or another connection with Judas and the Black Messiah. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover was the one who was kind of pulling the strings here in some ways. Um, and there's a scene towards the end of the film that um, Jimmy Fletcher walks up to his picture that's hanging on a wall and kind of um, lets him know how he feels about being caught in this kind of spider's web. Just bouncing back to Andre Day real quick, um, I thought that it was really spot on having to play a character so complex that on one side she's vulgar, she's nasty, she's mean, you know, um, and this is even before she's on her drug of choice. Then on the flip side, she's uh, beautiful and she's this just this songbird. And when she gets on the stage, her emotion just flies out to have both sides in one person, I can only imagine if you have two hours and 10 minutes to portray that, think about how the real Billie Holiday was. Um, the music, as I was saying before, All of Me, which is one of my favorites of hers, um, God Bless the Child, which was um, the theme of the TV show Rock with Charles S. Dutton, um, Strange Fruit, of course, and uh, Them, Their, uh, Them Their Eyes was another one that, that I'd heard before. And I did like the way that the music was, was, um, was handled. But what I didn't really appreciate was for some reason, the director decided to play with the camera in a weird way. It was, it was weird because anytime that she was singing with the exception of the music, um, of, of the song Strange Fruit, anytime that she was singing, these transitions would occur in which the camera would show her singing, then it would fade into someone watching or someone looking, then it would fade back into her singing then it would fade over into another scene, then it would fade back again. And it seemed like it lost a bit of the connection that I had. Um, and in past like biopics with singers, um, it might be just a personal choice, but when you just sit kind of flat footed and just sing your songs and the director just leaves the camera alone, you kind of are able to get those little, you know, nuances with, you know, the your eyes and the way that the person is, um, you know, feeling and embodying what they're singing. And so I, I wondered what that decision was all about. Um, it it kind of pulled me out a bit, you know. Um, I will say that there was uh, this one uh, moment towards the end. I forget which song was being sung, but uh, Bill Hadi was singing a song and the camera kept cutting to this fight between her husband right. and um, <laughs> her boyfriend, the agent. Yes, yes. That one was kind of jarring. Maybe because she was also like singing something. Yes. Um, so I don't know what I would have liked there, but maybe not her, not Billie Holiday singing. <laughs> maybe some <laughs> other music where you know there's this backdrop of you know she's a successful singer and you know she's she's in the spotlight and you can see the bruise on her face from the last time her husband beat her right and then and then and then bruh and bruh are like throwing down right um, that yeah those choices kind of didn't work for me in that moment i think there was maybe one other time uh that was like that where like she's singing and also drama's happening um, yeah exactly kind of odd um, yeah, kind of odd, and I think there was also this moment, like like during the credits, because I watched all the way to the end. Yes, uh, like it's a Marvel movie, and um, <laughs> like I guess half, halfway through the credits, 
um, you know, she's uh, dancing with with uh, her boyfriend, the agent. Right. And they, and they cussing each other out. And I'm like, well, what's, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah. Because what I liked about that that moment of the the credits was the song that was being sung. I think it started out with her singing All of Me. And I felt the yes. parallel between the stuff that happened in her life and, you know, her battle with the feds that yes. taking everything else from me. You know, you yes. know, when they're highlighting the fact that, you know, on her deathbed, you know, she was being uh, handcuffed and arrested. Yeah. By the feds who they implied had planted uh, uh, drugs on her. Right. So it's like, you know, you've taken everything else from me, take that too. Yeah. And I felt, oh, wow, that matches the lyrics. That was nice. But then, you yeah. know, five minutes later, she teaching dude how to dance. He can't dance. They cause him. I'm like, what? <laughs> it was just what? so. And then after that, <sighs> it goes to another moment where she's singing again. So I'm thinking, why did you cut up the, the image of her singing alone? Right. Why did, why did you split that up? with this random rehearsal type fun moment. What was that for? And why did you put it during the credits? It was an odd choice that I didn't really get. Yeah, it's like, um, it was an, ex it was like a, basically it was, it was style over substance because there are times in the movie that, that they're showing black and white scenes. There are times that they're showing, um, newspaper clippings from what's going on around the time there are times that it's almost like a fever dream where the the the, the screen is like fuzzy around the edges um and i mean it's 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 like these weird filters at times kind of like you can put on like a video to where you make it look like old and nostalgic where where um i guess the grade of the film is kind of breaking up a little bit but he'll have a scene where the movie looks perfect and and on the on the norm when it's just shot and without all of the special I, I guess sauce on it it's a beautiful film but for some reason he'll have a scene where she's singing and it, it, it's shot perfect the color is wonderful she's you know she's rocking out and then right next to it'll be a scene where you've got this weird filter like it's footage that's playing on one of those old-fashioned um like like the video uh, monitors that we that we looked at um, in school back in the day, then it flashes and all of a sudden it shows like a newspaper clipping or something. Then it shows this weird scene where it's like, you know, I just the only way I can describe it is like it was like fuzzy around the edges, and you're just putting one beside one beside one when one would have just done it. The 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 way that he was shooting it to begin with was perfect. And if not for those transitions, um, every time almost that she was singing, like I said, without the, with the exception of uh, Strange Fruit, no song was delivered to you just straight with her and the camera and the audience. Um, I, I didn't I didn't really get the logic of the different, um, as you say, the, the different filters. Um, right. And what they were, what they were supposed to accomplish. Um, so yes, yeah, so you've got like the normal shots you've got the grainy film looking stuff you got the black and white things i did not understand why does this look like this now right what does that have to do with the plot of the film as it's going because we're not really jumping back and forth between time periods except for um the interview that she has um in the beginning yeah and I'm thinking right. that would be a perfect place to change how it looks because it's obviously a different setting. This is like the, the frame for the entire um, movie, this interview that's in right. her career. But yes. yeah, I did not understand why, why is it black and white here? Yeah. Why, is, why is it grainy right here? Why is it desaturated here? When, like you said, a, a moment ago, it's like the same, it's the same scene, the same place, the same people are talking. And now it just looks different. So, I mean, sure, if you're going for like, you know, a random like music video that, you know, you and I may have grown up on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, go but, for it, you know? <laughs> but, but, but why why is that kind of thing happening in this thing that's set mostly in the 50s? So I didn't, I did not understand the logic of those choices. It, it, yeah, it was, you know, there were times that it was, that, that things were a bit boring. It was time that that it was a bit sleepy. Um, you know, the film is kind of uneven because it bounces between periods in which she's going, you know, a bit 
loopy with with the drugs and everything, then with the relationships, then with being on the stage, and then with you know doing some other things. And easily you'd be able to say, well, that's just how her life was. It was herky jerky, but there are movies that have been shown about her in which things were more linear and it was a better, you know, a better story all around. Um, Lady Sings the Blues. This was um, 1972 and Diana Ross portrayed uh, Lady Day. This is a staple in Black households. This is something that either your, your parents might have had a chance of putting you on to or, or aunts and uncles or whoever or whoever else. Um, this movie had Billy D. Williams play her husband, um, uh, Louis McKay, where this guy, uh, Rob Morgan, who I have seen in a lot of great performances, uh, do his thing. But just, it took you from the beginning where she was being put in jail and then it took you all the way back to where she was not even Billie Holiday. And it walked you through her and her mom and being into, you know, the prostitution and 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 growing up and slowly becoming a singer and then meeting Louis McKay and everything. And I mean, Billy D. Williams is already suave and <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Already, you know, just just he's he's got that thing about him anyway. So he stole the movie, but this guy Rob Morgan p- played him more like just a villain. In which, you know, you don't necessarily have to compare movies, but it's important to know that the people watching these are going to, you know, it, it you, you can't avoid it. And I'm wondering, Lee Daniels of all people, you know, I mean, um, Lady Sing the Blues was nominated for five uh, Academy Awards. So in a lot of ways, you know, besides Diana Ross being in The Wiz, um, and the things that she was doing in her career around that time, that set her up for success. She knocked it out of the park clean. And, and, and Andre Day did her thing also. But um, Lady Sing the Blues had a lot of characters in it that carried the weight. One of the biggest was it had Richard Pryor in it. And he didn't have just a little tiny role. You know, he was piano man, so he kind of did his thing. So... You know, I just wondered what, you know, some of the decisions that were made, like I said, because a lot of it just came off as kind of sleepy for me. Um, what are some other things that you may have thought, you know, were, were, were actually um, redeeming qualities of the movie? So the biggest thing uh, that I appreciated was um, Andre Day singing uh, as Billie Holiday. Yes. Because um, yes. Billie Holiday, you know, had a unique way of singing. She yes, had she a did. very, very unique cadence. I mean, I feel certainly like, she's probably going for, you know, trying to sound like an instrument. Playing, yes. Yes. But, but yet singing. Um, yes. I believe Andre Day did a fantastic job of singing like Billie Holiday would. Um, so not just the cadence, but just like, I guess, the, the tone quality. Um, all, all of that. I, I, I found it a, a very believable performance of her singing. So that's the thing that um, I appreciate more. Probably because I'm a musician um, and, then, and because I'm into jazz, but I, I really appreciated that because I have seen uh, some other films where people are imitating well-known singers who have well-known style and it ain't work. And right. I understand that that's, you know, that's a difficult thing, but that's why I feel you have to do it well. Um, yes. If you're going to pretend to be someone that everybody knows, you sh- what what you put out there should look right or look believable um and i think it definitely did in this case yes certainly um there's a song that she has on the soundtrack which the soundtrack is it gives you just the soul of this film and and places it in your ears just to keep with you after this is done there's a song that andre day sings called uh, tigress and tweed and it's kind of like an up tempo, but but still, um, kind of like the it's like a club kind of song, but it's got all of the flair that um, Billie Holiday possessed. The wild thing about it is, uh, Tigress and Tweed are the name of are the names of Billie Holiday's favorite two perfumes, and so she took those two names and kind of um, breathed and breathed to life a song that would. Um, stand for 
everything that Billy was back then with being so sultry and so, you know, suave and sexy and also being powerful and at times being dominating and at times being childlike and, and, and afraid. There's a lot of things that, that Andre Day did. And for this being, if I'm not mistaken, her debut as an actress, um, she's knocking the doors off. I'm, I'm really excited to see what she does, um, you know, in the future, because uh, this was meant for her. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that she has a chance of taking some roles that maybe don't have to be musical because now she's done this and I don't think she can really, you know, get from under it. Um, but it, you know, A to Z front to back, she, she, she really did her thing. And Strange Fruit is a song that just, there's so much that can be said about it. And the time in the film that she came up with it and the time that she came into the open field and, um, saw what was going on with, um, you know, the, the Ku Klux Klan just leaving and, you know, the way that we've been treated and people being hung and the bodies being left and everything. Um, that's a song that stirs something inside, you know, inside of you. Um, and I mean, I was much, much, much younger, but the first time that I ever heard it, it, it hit me then. And there've been interpretations um, on it from like Kanye West and, um, a lot of different, you know, artists, but I like the way that Lee Daniels was smart enough to just leave that song alone when it came time for it. And you could see the way that Andre just um, placed it all on the line, more or less. And 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 that's something that you you can't teach. That's something that she had to drum up and something that she had to, you know, watch footage of Billy Holiday, you know, singing it and I'm sure listening to it repeatedly and and everything else. Um it's 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 an, it's incredible. It's incredible. There are a lot of things that I wish would have been better, but you know, who am I? <laughs> right. Um all in all, as far as being rewatchable, I, I kind of wonder because um, when I did watch it, I, I watched it through all the way and said, no, let me just watch it two times just to make sure I really got it down pat. And it actually did better upon the second view. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's not bad as far as being rewatchable. You know, there are some scenes that are, you know, very traumatic. So, you know, things like her being abused, you know, by her uh, husband, abused by her boyfriend before him and things like that, that can be hard to watch, you know. Um, but as far as the acting, it's it's her. It's one of these situations where you've got 15 or 17 different people um, acting in one performance, but she's the star. So it's just her, you know, she did circles around everyone else that was around and all. Um, the director, and I wish that Lee would have um, left some things alone. <laughs> I wish that, you know, and once again, you know, who am I to just say how things should be in that regard, but just as far as my taste, it seems like you can drop a little bit more that style and make sure that your story is actually the way that it's supposed to be. Um, Suzanne Laurie Parks, um, who has done, you know, theater and who has done plays, who has done, um, you know, a couple of things. I think movies also, she's the uh, one who, who wrote the film. Um, she laid the groundwork for it. And so, you know, but um, if there was a, 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 a fifth element of sorts, I guess that it would be, it's good to see um, a talent like Andra um, grab, something by the horns and actually give it her all and actually make it as impactful, as powerful as it actually was. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna have to say that I'd give it a we saw that. Um, I, I'm, if it had to be like a number, I would be bordering maybe like a six or so. Not saying that in time there would be a chance that, you know, it would play a bit better. But when you put this in front of me, unfortunately, I have to compare it to what's already been done with Diana Ross and with that film. It's 
it's you know they're, they're so far across the spectrum it's it's not even close what did you feel about about the film you know in a nutshell oh. Um, like I said, um, the acting, the only acting I was really impressed with was Andre Day. Yeah. Um, I felt most of the other, other characters weren't really doing that much. Um, so that's how I feel about that. Um, the plot, you know, the title of the movie kind of threw me off a little bit because the title says it's Uni the United States versus Billie Holiday. The right. The descriptions talk about, you know, focusing on the song Strange Fruit. Right. But this movie seemed to me not really about that. It, it seemed yeah. to be like a standard biopic about right. Billie Holiday. Um, so I felt a bit a bit of a disconnect between just how the film went out versus how it, I guess it's being advertised. Um, I would have I would have liked to spend a little more time on how that song became so important to her. Um, but that's kind of not how I went about in this in in this one. It kind of it kind of caught that like in the middle. Um, and of course, they had the, her performing it, which was which is a great moment. Right. Um, but I was looking for a little more on that uh, than to spend all this time with a bunch of other people who aren't really that that interesting. Right. Yeah. So that, yeah. that was my issue with, I guess, the plot, um, and that affects my desire to rewatch it. Um, like I said, there there were things I I kind of wanted to see that I didn't see, and now that I know I'm not going to see them, I'm not that interested in watching it again. Yeah. So that said, um, the last element for me would be uh, the music, which I really, really appreciated the music. Um, I did not agree with everywhere it was placed. Like like I had mentioned about like some of these scenes where in the movie she's singing her song and then it cuts to some other thing. Right. Um, I didn't like that, but um, I did like the music. I Like I had said, I really enjoyed Andre Day's portrayal of how Billie Holiday might be singing. She sounded like someone who sounds like Billie Holiday. Um, so I appreciated that. My final rating would be, um, uh, I saw it. Um, yeah, I, and I, I think I just want to leave it there. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, how did you feel about the film? How did you feel about Andre Day and about uh, Lee Daniels' direction towards the film? Um, this is the time which we are so thankful for where light is being showed on a lot of our stories. Um, a lot of things um, are in the works and these first two months of this year, January and February, and with this being Black History Month, have been um, met with great contributions, um, some that we have already done and a couple that we'll be doing, you know, really soon. So um, that's pretty much the film. You know, we enjoyed what we did and um, we want to know what you think. So drop a comment and let us know. Click the like button and please join us, subscribe. Until then, we will meet you for another film review. See you next time. Peace.